Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. New video, new look for Meat Snowball. I gotta keep you guys on your toes. I gotta keep you guys guessing. You never know what I'm gonna look like when you click on one of these videos. In one video, I might have a mustache. In another video, I might be clean shaven like I am now. In another video, I might have a full beard. In a video, I might have, you know, long curly hair. And then in the next video, I'll shave my head off. And then in the next video after that, I'll have long hair once again. You guys really never know what to expect in these videos. And that is the beauty of this channel. It is unpredictable. You think I'm going left? I'm actually going right. You know, one of these days, who knows, maybe I'll have an eyebrow shaved off or maybe I'll come in, uh, come on here with huge tits. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll put a rack on myself. I'll go get surgery and have a huge rack of tits and maybe that way my engagement can go up. But anyway, actually my engagement is already fucking amazing. So thank you guys so much for that. But anyway, enough about my appearance. Uh, I want to talk about something that's been really pissing me off over the past couple of days. Since the international break started, I've seen a lot of Barcelona disrespect by a lot of different people, okay, whether it's ESPN or these power rankings when it comes to the UCL giving Barca no chance of winning anything, or this show called Box to Box. This is a show that you guys tell me all the time I gotta react to and that you wanna see me collab with. And I saw this video that they posted and it was about, you know, their football power rankings so far. And I was watching the video, I was skimming through the video, and then they got to Barca. And they put Barca in a, you know, in a in a spot on the list that I wasn't really happy with because obviously being a Barca fan, I'm always going to back my team. But I think these guys were being, not all of them, by the way, I'm not talking about, I've never watched a show before, by the way, so I'm not familiar with their name, so I apologize for that. And I mean, I, again, I mean, no disrespect to their show. They do really, really good work. I, I was really entertained watching this video, but again, it's just a reaction video. It's just friendly. Um, not, I, I was going to say friendly banter, but there's no banter here. Anyway, it's just like me wanting to react to something that I saw. But again, in the video, I wasn't really happy with, with where they placed Barca. So I want to go back and watch the video with you guys and understand the reasoning why they're placing Barca so low. Because some of the teams, some of the teams they put above Barca are fucking crazy. Again, we're not going to react to the whole podcast because it is an hour and 30 minutes. We're, we're just going to react to the Barca portion of it. And we're going to just listen to what these guys have to say. And I'm going to offer my rebuttal. And it should be really, really fun. It's another reaction video. I've done a couple reaction videos over the past few days. Uh, so, you know, it's the international break. We've got, we got to come up with something when it comes to content. And I thought this would be perfect. Again, a show that's very popular that you guys seem to love. So I thought I would react to it and give you guys my thoughts on why, on, on why I think they're wrong about Barcelona so far this season. Again, this is about this season so far. We're not talking about Barca can win the UCL in like nine months from now. So far. For the, through, through the first three or four games of the year, which, you know, Prem teams and Serie A teams and Bundesliga teams have played three games, La Liga teams have played four, but whatever. Through, the, through this first batch of games of the season, how good have Barca have been? And in my opinion, they've been one of the two best teams in the world. Or one of the three best teams. I would say City, I would say Liverpool, and I'd say Barcelona have been the teams that I've watched that have impressed me the most. Now, is that to say that Barca are more favorites to win the UCL than Real Madrid? No, but so far Barca have been better than Real Madrid. So again, we're gonna watch this video, react to it, react to it, give you guys my thoughts like I always do. And yeah, man, this should be really, really fun. Uh, let's just jump into the reaction right now. Okay, I fast forwarded to the part of the video where they talk about Barca. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the part. So if it's not the part, you guys are probably not gonna see this clip. But if you're seeing this clip, then it's the right part. So let's get into it. I don't wish that that <laughs> Okay, let's move on to yeah. number seven. 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 Well, I seven, got... I have PSG. PSG? PSG. PSG. I, they've done well, but I kept them in the same spot that I had them last. Mm. So I have uh, Barcelona. I have Barcelona. <laughs> Too low. Whoa. Okay, so two of them, up, this guy and, and the one, the other guy have Barca at seven. This guy has PSG. I don't know what, what the other guy thinks about that. I don't think he's set a team yet. But again, two of them have Barca at number seven. At number seven, okay, so far this season. They're, they think Barca is the seventh best team in Europe thus far this season. Okay, so let's hear the reasoning as to why. Oh, that's too low. Tra this this elite oh, this oh, elite we're gonna get this elite, we're gonna get cooked. This elite Ooh. team gimmick is not flying. Yes. Did you watch them? Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. What is the gimmick though? What is the elite team gimmick? Like I don't understand. What, what more do you want Borussia to do thus far this season to be considered elite so far? I'm not saying they're like I said. I'm not sitting here claiming that Barcelona are gonna win the UCL. Okay, even though I did actually say that in my bold predictions video, but. This elite team gimmick, I mean, it just proves to me that maybe he hasn't watched Barca enough this year. Because if you've watched the football, you know, it's been pretty outstanding, honestly. If I may say so myself, and I know I'm a Barca fan, so that might, you know, take that as you will. Obviously, I'm going to be biased towards my team, but I think Barcelona have been so amazing this year so far that I think even rival fans can admit that. But again, let's keep, let's, let's, let's keep hearing the reasoning as to why. The insane. seven nothing was insane. I agree. Yes. Every performance before that was not insane. You see, that's okay. Now, now that's for sure. Again, I'm not trying to send hate to any of these people because I think they're great content creators and we're all in the same space. So again, but that proves to me that this guy specifically, again, I apologize. I don't know his name. 
He doesn't. He hasn't watched Barca. He's looked at the foot mob like like uh, uh, score after the game is done because Barcelona have played eight halves of football so far this year. Obviously, four games, two halves per game, two times four is eight. You guys, uh, amazing math. But anyway, eight halves of football. If you've watched Barca in those eight halves, they've been basically amazing or outstanding in seven of those halves. The one half you can point to was maybe the first half against Rayo Vallecano or maybe the first half against Valencia, but it wasn't for the whole half. It was like spurts. It was like 15 minutes against Rayo Vallecano and like 20 minutes against Valencia. So even if you add those two, 20 plus 15, it's 35. It's not even a full half. It doesn't even equate to a full half. Barcelona have been amazing, bro. They just have been amazing. Against Valencia, down 1-0, you come back and win that game, Okay. Against Bilbao, you weren't down 1 0, but Bilbao is a really, really good team. A team that won a trophy last year. A Copa del Rey. Bilbao won the Copa del Rey last year. A really good team. Obviously, we know Iñaki, Nico, they have a lot of good players. And they have historically, and it's always a tough team to play against in La Liga. Since I've been a kid, Bilbao has always been a tough game. And then you have obviously Rayo Vallecano, a really, really tough away ground to play at, by the way. A ground that Barca hadn't won uh, a game there in years. And you go down 1-0 in that game early on. They're putting on the pressure. And Barca still find a way to win that game and be utterly dominant in that, in that second half. Just completely outplayed Rayo Vallecano. And again, I, I didn't even mention how, how, how much they outplayed Bilbao. And again, Valladolid on the weekend on Saturday, the 7-0, the most dominant performance we've seen from any, from any team so far this season. So again, that proves to me that he hasn't really watched Barca that much. Because again, if you look at the teams and you think, oh, they're not great teams, that's still, you don't really, he probably doesn't really watch that much La Liga anyway. But if you look at the performances, if you actually sit down and watch the full 90 minute games, you know that Barca have been amazing through basically every single half of football that they played. But again, I've been yapping for too long, but it is a reaction video, so that's the whole point of this. But let's keep listening to the reasoning as to why Barca is number seven. Facts. PSG, PSG 6 0, not moved. 7 0. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Barca 7 0. I would argue, I would argue I PSG's moved. dominance has been better than Barcelona's. You, what? I mean, first of all, PSG playing League One. And PSG is a team that they're always going to rack up these results, okay? Like, we cannot compare Ligue 1 to, to, the, to La Liga. It's just, it's, it's impossible to do. But again, that, that, that's, uh, that's outrageous to me. But anyway. You got you to factor in the league. You got to factor in who they're playing against. Because yeah, who, who is Barca playing against? Last week? The Real Valladolid. Bro, they're playing with... <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to say it. Real Valladolid. People don't like to admit it, but La Liga's bottom teams are really ass. <laughs> That, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Am I about to crash out in this fucking reaction video? This, like, first of all, let's just say this. If you want to talk about Barca's opposition, that's okay. But you saying that PSG has been more impressive when they've played, I'm pretty sure, Le Havre, Montpellier, and Lille is crazy. And to talk about Valladolid, Valladolid held their own against Real Madrid in the Bernabeu for a half. Now, in the second half, they got spanked 3-0. Okay, Madrid thoroughly outplayed them in that second half, but still... They made that game competitive for a half. And Barca faced off against them at home and literally pounded them as much as you can pound somebody, okay? That was like fucking Barca was dread and then Valladolid was like sky Bree, okay? That was kind of gross. But anyway, you guys understand, like, I'm really trying to put this into perspective, okay? They literally left them, uh, they, 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 they just, they, they, they tore through that whole team, bro. 7-0 is insane. And again, Bilbao is a good team. Valencia, historically, obviously, we know is a really, really good team in La Liga and also a team that's made UCL finals. Who cares about historically? Over the past couple of years, yes, they've struggled because of their whole financial situation. But last year, they were a good team as well. They finished top half of the table in La Liga. And this year, they, have, they, they've had, they, they actually have a good amount of They have good players. They have quality players on that team. And like I said, I think Bilbao is a team that's always tough. Rayo Vallecano is a tough place to play at. But if you, if you want to talk about PSG, La Havre, Montpellier, and Lille, are we, are, are we being for real now? Like, we're, we're really putting, we're putting stock in that, but we're not putting stock in the teams that Barca have beat? That's crazy to me. I understand, but then you have Real Madrid tying against Mallorca. All the, all the teams outside of the, the top eight or nine of La Liga are really, like, bottom. I think it's more a financial issue. That's, like just they, not, they the that's not true. That's just simply not true. The, like... He's probably a Premier League fan, and we know that Premier League fans have this like um, they they feel they're they're like elitist when it comes to their league. They believe that they believe that their league is so far superior to every other league that no matter like you could drop they they really believe you could drop Southampton in in, in the La Liga and they finish top four. Premier League fans truly believe that they're so, they, they have they're so elitist when it comes to the Prem. It's actually fucking insane. They think you can drop Ipswich into the La Liga or into the Serie A and they finish top three. That's how much they rate these lower these these uh, these, these lower table these uh, lower lower league now these 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 low table sides in the in the Premier League. It's crazy, bro. It's actually insane. And and this is not the only guy that does that, by the way. It's every Premier League fan that thinks this way. The players to compete yes, against around the dream. Look, we don't. The reason why Ronaldo and Messi were able to put up all those stats all those years, I'm not saying they're stat patterns because they were obviously the two best players in the world and probably the two best players of all time. Yes. But was because 
the, the discrepancy between the top La Liga teams and the bottom La Liga teams was insane. Listen, it's they, what? The reason why Messi and Ronaldo put up those numbers is because they were playing in La Liga. Brother, in the 2010s when Messi and Ronaldo were in their prime, that was by far the best league in the world. I, I hope this guy realizes that. I hope he, he realizes what he's saying is so fucking insane. Like, and Ronaldo was scoring goals when he was at United before he got to Madrid. He was winning the Golden Boot. Ronaldo was scoring goals when he went to Juventus. Ronaldo was scoring goals for Portugal. Messi was scoring goals for Argentina. Messi's record against the top six in England when it comes to goals is insane. What type of argument is this? The reason why Messi and Ronaldo scored so many goals is because they were playing in La Liga. By the way, like I said, La Liga in that time was peak. It, it, it wiped the fucking Premier League when it came to quality. It wasn't even close, bro. It wasn't even close. So uh, that's, a, that's a crazy take. It's insane. They did it in international footy as well, so... Oh, once again, I'm not saying... But, like, if, if you put, if you put like, let's say, like, like the bottom-level teams of the Prem in La Liga, you're not getting the stats that they would have gotten. There it is. You see, it's, it's always, like, if you put the, the lower-table teams of the Prem in La Liga, then they would be amazing. It's always, it's always the same argument. Yeah, but that's the uh, reason why there's different leagues. But also, I don't necessarily agree with that. But, look, I had Barca at 8, and I moved on to 7. Mm. There's improvement there. But, like, I, I want to see them versus... Even just like Somewhat. a top four team, like just any I'm really moved. Then, I mean, then what's the point of doing a power ranking right now? If you want to wait, like, th then you can't rate any team. Because if you want to wait till a team plays like the best team in the world for, for you to actually rate them, then you're going to be waiting a long time. Bro. If, you, if you're going to wait until Barca play Real Madrid in October, then don't make this video until October. Because again, you're talking about PSG, but they've played Montpellier, fucking Le Havre, and also Leo. You know, Liverpool, yes, they spanked Man United, but Man United is not some world beater. And the other teams that they beat, yes, like, they're not great either. You know, Liverpool haven't been the, the best teams in the world thus far. They haven't played a Man City yet. They haven't played Arsenal. They haven't played Real Madrid. You know? So, like, thus far, this season, if you want to talk about Barca, you got to be honest and say they've been one of the best teams in the world. Again, what's going to happen once they face Real Madrid? We'll find that out in fucking October. But if you're doing a power ranking right now as of September 3rd or 2nd after the international break and you're basing it off these four games, not historically what happened last season because you know last season for Barca was really disappointing. But this season thus far, you cannot with a straight face say that Barca are anywhere below the top five. And honestly, that's still pushing it. They should be in the top three 100%. They've been one of the three best teams in the world. And I think any rival fan will tell you the same thing. If they're actually honest and actually are more fans of football than their actual team. Because there's obviously all these little fucking kids that watch, uh, that watch football through TikTok and they're, they're, like they're, their love for their club just blinds them. And people might think that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just being completely honest with what I've watched. I think most people, if you've watched Barca, again, undefeated. 12 points have a possible 12, but not lost a single game. They've scored the most goals in La Liga. They have the top goal scorer in La Liga. They have the second top goal scorer in La Liga. They have the top assister in La Liga thus far. They have a manager who plays a high-intensity, attractive brand of football, and it's showing. So, again, for me, that, that's crazy. Really moved because what, like, everybody was talking about this Olmo wasn't going to fit in. The guy is moving in that team. He's the main creator. He's the main outlet. This guy knows what he's talking about. And I fuck with the shirt too. I fuck with the shirt. But yeah, he's right about Daniel Mo. Daniel, Daniel Mo's been amazing. Lewandowski somehow keeps scoring. And yeah, yeah but he's not playing that well. In but my yeah, he, I don't think he played well even in the, no. the seven. You know, I, I'm starting to like these guys. You know, they, they give Lewa credit, but still criticize him a little bit. You got to keep Lewa honest, bro. You got to keep Lewa honest. honest, And you got to keep him, you got to keep him humbled. But yeah, do I think Lewandowski's been Bayern Munich Lewandowski like some people have been saying? Absolutely the fuck not. I don't think he's been one of Barca's three best players thus far. But he has been, you know, he's been scoring goals and he's been getting into the right positions. So I'm optimistic about that. But I like that. I like the, the, the slight Lewa slander. I appreciate that. Nothing no, winner, whatever. But, when someone like that, when someone somebody could play bad and yet still score or find his way on a team sheet, everything's clicking. But everything's Rafinha, working. Rafinha has been very insane this season. I'm I'm surprised. I'm, Underrated. I wasn't expecting a jump in quality mm -hmm. at that at his level right now, but he he's been there. We all knew Rafinha was elite, bro. Yeah, yeah. no, I think we. Yeah, knew I think most people that watched Rafinha at Leeds and watched him his first two seasons at Barca knew that Rafinha had this quality about him. I don't think it's something that's surprising to me. Um, they're not really talking about the ranking anymore. They're more just they're mostly talking about Barca right now as a whole. So we're gonna watch the whole Barca clip and just kind of give my thoughts on it. I thought it'd be fun. Uh, but yeah, I think Rafinha is a guy who, you know, we always knew he has a, had this quality and the output was always there. But I think now under Hansi Flick, he's been giving a lot more freedom than he was under Xavi. And even last season, the second half under Xavi, if you watched him play, Xavi was giving him a lot more freedom, and that's why he thrived so much. Was one of, was one of our two best players, I would say, in the second half of the year, or three best players. 
And this year, man, when he's playing centrally, uh, obviously against Bilbao, he was fucking amazing, outstanding against Bilbao. Against Valladolid, he was playing on the left, he was moving to the right against, like, he was just, he's, he's been everywhere on the pitch, you know, he's even tracking back, he tracks back every single time Barca lose the ball. He's a quality player. I think most football fans that watch Rafinha, you know, and, you know, weren't blinded by hate, knew that he was always gonna, he was, he, he had this in him always, he always did. Honestly, Kunde. Everything is clicking. Oh, Kunde, Kunde was good. It's clicking when you're playing a Rayo Vallecano. Let's see. Yeah, what three games, games, three wins, flick. Yeah, but but again, <laughs> it comes back to the whole the whole like who have you played argument. And I understand that's that's not a bad argument to make, but the football has been there. You know what I mean? Like this is not so, like this is something that you can. If you watch Barca's performances, you understand that they can transfer over to other teams. Now, am I saying that they're going to beat Real Madrid or Man City if they play them seven? No, absolutely not. That'd be stupid. I'd be stupid to sit here and say that. You know what I mean? But again, if you've watched the quality of it, like if you've, if, you've, if you've watched Barca so far this season, you know the quality is there and you know it's a game plan that can be, you know, duplicated multiple times. It can be replicated, I should say. It's not a one, it's not a one, it's not, it's not like they had one good game against Fidel and the rest has been shit. No, the football has been consistently great. And when you see that, that signs that the team can even, can, can grow into something even better as the season progresses and they obviously become more comfortable with each other and honestly Flick becomes more comfortable with this team. But again, they, they've talked about it here, Balde, Kunde, basically every single Barca player has, has performed really, really well thus far this season. Inigo Martinez had kind of a shaky start, but he's been picking it up and he's been a lot better as of recently. Against Valencia, he wasn't great, but against, uh, against Bilbao and against, uh, Valladolid, he was really, really good. Uh, uh, and against, Rayo, not, not, not against Bilbao, sorry, against Rayo Vallecano and against Valladolid, he's been really good, really, really good most notably against Vallecano who was putting his body on the line towards the end of that game you know Kunde is still one of the best defensive right back or the best defensive right back in world football and one of the best right backs period but this looks to be back to you know nearly his best like he was that season under Chayu when Barca won the league so again I don't understand I understand I get the argument I, I understand like I'm not trying to be dense I get where they're coming from when it comes to the opposition but it seems that they're just going out of their way to discredit Barca just for the sake of it and that to me is kind of that's kind of weird honestly Bro, me. you're acting like they were all convincing wins, bro. I think three of them they scored like past the 75th Brother, minute of two-one win. You cannot pull up. Two okay, two. again, that's <laughs> that shows that he didn't actually probably watch the games because most of them were convincing wins. Most of them were convincing, convincing wins. And again, convincing wins. Uh, convincing wins. And again, we're talking about a Barca squad. Keep this in mind because I haven't brought this up in the video because I don't want to make it sound like I was making an excuse. But this is just this this has to be pointed out because last year when Real Madrid dealt with injuries, everybody pointed it out. Okay, so we have to point this out with Barca right now. Barcelona beat Valencia at the Mestalla after being down 1 0. In the second half, that was totally convincing. Barca were never going to lose that game in the second half. Against Bilbao, again, that was a convincing win. From the first minute to the last minute, Barca thoroughly, thoroughly outplayed Bilbao. Against Rayo Vallecano, again, first 15 minutes shaky, but for the rest of that game, we all knew the second goal was coming for Barca at any moment. It was just going to come at any moment against Valladolid, obviously 7 0. There's no, there's not, you can't have a more convincing win than that. But what I want to say is this we're doing this with who? Who's, who's playing for Barcelona? Because we're missing, again, the squad on paper is is good, but it's not Man City. It's not Real Madrid. We don't have Mbappe and fucking Valverde and Bellingham and Chouameni. You know, we're playing kids like Bernal. We're playing kids like Kuwarsi. We're playing kids like Balde. Uh, we're obviously playing guys like uh, Lamin Jamal, who is obviously fucking elite, one of the best in the world already, but still he's 17 years old. We're missing Frankie Young. We're still missing our star boy in Gavi. Okay, we're still missing uh, Ronald Araujo, one of the best center backs in world football, and his partner Andreas Christensen, again, one of the best center backs in world football, who can also fill in as a CDM. So we're missing players. This is without, like, this is not Barca's full squad. Barca's squad is going to get stronger as the season goes on, and the performances, if you think they're good now, just wait till all those guys come, come, come back. So again, we're doing all this with a lot of our players injured, and, you know, but they don't bring that up, but they bring up the, the, opposition, the, 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 the opposition that Barca's doing it against. That, to me, is weird. Ooh. The Bernabeu with uh, Casado starting at CDM. I'm sorry. Bro, he's injured. He's not even... Uh, no, that's Casado's now. Yeah, that's Casado's now. now playing. Wait, what did he say? I'm sorry. Bro, what did they say? You cannot pull up to the Bernabeu with uh, Casado starting at CDM. I'm sorry. Bro, he's injured. He's not what the fuck is that? What type of point is that? How does that... But, but again, how does that equate to where you rank Barca right now? Like... Talking about Marc Asado and how he won't hold his own in the Bernabeu. Let me tell you something, bro. If Madrid keeps playing the way they keep, they keep playing, we could bring up Barca B and they'll, and they'll hold their own against Real Madrid. Okay? Because they have Madrid higher than Barca. And again, thus far this season, there's nothing. There's no argument you can make to say that Real Madrid has been a better team than Barcelona thus far this season. Again, historically, yes. Last year, they were better. They won the trouble, base, not the trouble, the actual trouble, but they won a trouble, basically. And they had to kill in Mbappe this year. But again, historically, last if you want to take, to take into account last year and this season, yes, Madrid, you have to have them ahead of Barca because they, they earned that. They're the European champions right now. But if you want to talk about this year through the first four games of La Liga, Real Madrid, who tied against Mallorca, who tied against Las Palmas, 
who struggled in the first half against Valladolid, a team that Barca thoroughly outplayed through 90 minutes. And, you know, in the second half, they like it was looking shaky against, um, against who was it that they fucking played this weekend? Who was it that they played? Um, I forget who they played, but again, I, I, I just it, it blanked my mind. But again, it was looking shaky. Betis, sorry, it was it was against Betis. It was looking shaky for for them against Betis, and, and, and up until that that uh, Mbappe, that moment of brilliance from Mbappe, and that pass from from that moment of brilliance from Fede Valverde, sorry, and that pass from Mbappe. So again, I don't know, I don't know what the fuck that point is about Casado because I'm very confident that if Casado goes into the run away, he can hold his own. Okay, so again, but again, that 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 means nothing for right now. What are we talking about? Not even, uh, no, no, that's now. Yeah, now. that's now. Now. R.I.P. Was really good too. Bro, this 2-1, this 2-1, this 2-1 80th minute, three shots on target gimmick is not gonna be working for me anymore, bro. Uh, you, did you guys, you guys want to know something? This is uh, <laughs> three shots on target. Barcelona have, I think, the second highest XG in Europe right now behind Liverpool. So three shots on target again. If you, you I don't know. That was that 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 just. Again, I'm not trying to be a dick, okay? Because I, I really actually enjoyed this podcast. I watched almost the whole thing and I thought it was really, really good. But that's crazy to say. I'm not going to react to the whole thing, to the tiny more of this, because honestly, my blood pressure is going to go up. But again, I wanted to talk about that part because the way that Barca get disrespected nowadays, again, I understand that last season wasn't the best. But if you look at them this season, you cannot sit here and act like, you know, like <laughs> like they haven't been elite. And to talk about Casado, if you can hold his own in the Verna Bayou, and you, and, you talk, and you bring up all these points that really have no relevancy to how Barca, how good Barca have been through the first four games, um, and you bring up like how bad La Liga teams are, it's just, again, it's um, it just shows that you, you don't really watch that much Barca, so you haven't really watched Barca that, uh, that much thus far. But again, it's fine. But yeah, that is going to be the end of the reaction video, man. Go check out these guys. You guys probably already know them, obviously. If you, if you watch me, you probably know who they are. But if you don't know who they are, I'll leave a link to their uh, to this video in the description down below. You can go watch it. And yeah, man, I love every single one of you. If you guys want to see more reaction videos like this, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out.